I have a dream to be the first person to circumnavigate Hyrule in an aircraft, but I have decided to turn this into a challenge and I have to follow a set of basic rules. Rule number one, once I take off from the ground and start my journey, my aircraft is not allowed to touch the ground at any point. And if this does happen, I fail. Rule number two, I have to fly a designated route. And if any point I go off track, I will also fail. The route will consist of the nine outer Skyview Towers. The starting point will be Lookout Landing. And from there, I will follow this path through each region, staying on the right-hand side of each Skyview Tower, going in a counterclockwise rotation around the map. Although, there is one obstacle that is a requirement that I have to pass through, which is the Lightning Storm above the Faron region. Once I am through that, I will make my way to the intersection point for the full complete circumnavigation, which is the upper Zoranian Skyview Tower. Then I must finally land safely back at Lookout Landing to fully complete the journey. In order to start building an aircraft capable of making this journey possible, I need materials. But I have a problem. I currently have a shortage of Zonai components required to create test aircrafts. And the only way to get more is to hunt down and destroy many constructs for their charges. When it comes to playing games, I have integrity. So 30 hours grinding- Nope. Now that I have the required materials, this is where we run into a massive problem. No, it is not my mental state that will be an issue later. The problem is, how in the world am I going to develop an aircraft capable of flying all the way around Hyrule without touching the ground? Honestly, the easy part is making the actual aircraft, as I can only use fans to create the aircraft because all the other Zonai components, they disappear after a period of time. And as far as I know, fans, they just don't disappear. So I started out with a few different designs, and did some testing, but I ultimately settled on a fairly simple aircraft. I used a Zonai cart, two wood 4x4s for symmetry, and eight fans. Two for forward propulsion, and six for lift. Now comes the hard part. Trying to figure out how to have enough energy to fly around Hyrule. I first started with a single small battery to see how long the aircraft would stay airborne, and this was laughable. It lasted the better part of five seconds, but I wasn't gonna give up so easily. This is when I remembered that I picked up a big battery in a chest somewhere during my travels around Hyrule, and this very well could be the solution to my problem. So I did a quick test with just the big battery, and the results, let me tell you, they were much better than I ever expected. The big battery lasts almost 18 times longer than a small battery, coming in at 1 minute 30 seconds of flight time. And things, they're starting to look up as my dream is becoming more plausible by the minute. Wrong. This is what I would be saying if I could actually find a dispenser for these big batteries. So now we run into another problem that puts my whole entire dream of circumnavigating Hyrule at a standstill. No matter where I looked, I could not find another big battery. At this point, I was desperate. And what do you do when you get desperate? Well, the only solution is to find a sketchy online form. After some short searching and advirus later, I finally found my answer. You can buy big batteries from Forge Constructs, although there's a precondition. You need maxed out energy cells. And unfortunately for me, I only have two of the eight, which means if I do my math right, I'm going to need 300 crystallized charges times six, which would come out to 1800 crystallize charges. There is no way I could physically achieve that in a short amount of time, so that was entirely out of the question. But with a bit more digging, apparently level 3 flux constructs drop big batteries. So I went and tested this theory, and to my amazement, it dropped two big batteries on the first try. I was ecstatic. Finally, I have what I need and it was time to do a final test run to see if this challenge is possible. So I pulled out two big batteries and fused them together. This will also save them in auto build, so now all I have to do is go in and select that fused battery I just made in auto build, and oh my god is this expensive! Are you kidding me? 200! 200 zonite for that? This, uh, good thing I prepared for this earlier.
So after building a few of those batteries and making myself bankrupt, I managed to fit nine on the main deck before all my fuse slots were taken up. And with that, it was time for one final test flight. Now my goal is to see how far I can make it with just the big batteries alone. Most of the test was uneventful other than getting swarmed by some Aracuda. Although I almost had a date with death on the Zora Ridgeline. Out of nowhere a deranged sky debris came inches from taking out my aircraft making it almost slap to the ground. Okay maybe that was a bit of an exaggeration it was a few feet from crushing me but Note to self, avoid them like the plague for the final run. Finally, the last battery gave out at Terrytown, which I thought was a huge success. But this is still nowhere near completing the full journey. Now you might be questioning, how are you going to complete the rest of the journey without touching the ground? Because there's no way you can attach more batteries midair. Well, this took me a while to figure out myself, and honestly, I couldn't believe I didn't think of this sooner. Let me tell you a little bit about large Zonai charges. These bad boys, they are the ticket to my success. If I use just a single one, it gives me around 20 seconds of flight time. So hopefully this will be enough to make my journey successful. And with that, it was time for the final run. To make sure I did not cheat at all during this challenge, I live streamed the whole entire journey to my Discord channel. I auto built an aircraft and attached 8 batteries instead of 9 this time so the aircraft didn't struggle to take off the ground. I'd calculated that 8 big batteries should be just enough to at least get me to Terrytown before I had to start using large Zonai charges. I did my final flight check and it was time for liftoff. The first leg of Zora's domain was underway. Although one minute in and already I came very close to losing this challenge. Oh my days. Okay, I need some good karma right now. If I get hit by one of those, it's over. Yet again, a deranged sky debris fell directly in front of me. I had a feeling the sky debris, it was just out to get me for whatever reason. As if it had some sort of weird vendetta against me. I could just feel its murderous intent. I didn't understand it. This was the second time and it probably won't be the last time this happens. As I continued forward, one of my Discord members, Neptune, pointed something out that terrified me. Something I had miscalculated. No, oh, no, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> don't tell me that, <laughs> please. When I designed my aircraft, I made one fatal design flaw. I used wood 4x4s, which at the time, I thought was an easy fix to a very big issue I was having when building my craft, which was symmetry. But I overlooked something that should have been blatantly obvious. What happens to wood when it gets very hot? Well, it shouldn't take an aerospace engineer to figure this one out. It burns. And what is directly in my path? A super hot volcanic region that makes wood spontaneously combust. This is not what I wanted to hear at all. Because the next leg after Terrytown was Death Mountain. I could not believe I made such an easily fixed mistake. I could have stopped this challenge right here and now and made some quick modifications, but I was way too hard-headed to stop now, especially after using a pile of materials, especially Zonite. So the only thing I could hope for now was gaining enough altitude to bypass the extreme heat of this region. 
And after about 12 minutes, I finally reached Terrytown. And just like I had previously calculated, my last big battery disappeared. And it was finally time to start using the large Zonai charges. At this point, I was increasing my altitude in hopes to not burn up in a blazing ball of fire. I swung around the Akala Skyview Tower, and it was time to start heading for Death Mountain. To say I was nervous would be an understatement. I did not want this challenge to fail so early on, and as I made my way deeper and deeper into the region, nothing happened. I later found out that I was worried about nothing because this region is no longer active and Neptune was trolling me. And with that, the first major milestone in my journey to circumnavigate Hyrule was complete. And the next few minutes, they were uneventful. I made my way closer to the Typhlo Ruins Skyview Tower, which was the next checkpoint, and I went right past it. No issues. Now it was time to head straight for the Cold Heber region. But as I was making my way into the region, something a bit unexpected happened. The gravity, it just changed out of nowhere, and I was now ascending at a rapid rate, unable to move forward. This scared me, as I did not know if I was going to stop or keep going. Thankfully, it did stop, and I was able to continue forward. And although there was actually a good thing that came out of me gaining this much altitude, I should now be high enough that deranged sky debris should not be an issue. And the rest of my journey should be pretty much smooth sailing. Also, I want to say one thing. Using large Zonai charges was working like a dream. And pretty energy efficient at that. Even more so than small batteries. I was happily enjoying my time chatting with my Discord members. I even jokingly suggested that maybe I should fly past a King Gliok that I found in my own time. But ultimately, I was not willing to do something so stupid when I was already this far into the journey. I continued on and passed both of the towers in the Hebrew region. I did fly near that Gliog, but not close enough for it to spot me, thankfully. But I was not ready for what happened next. Just as I was getting lined up to make the long flight for the Gerudo Highlands, the unthinkable happened, signaling the demise that was about to ensue. Oh no, no. 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 You, you, you're joking right now, right? You are, you are actually... I bet you could only imagine just how devastated I was. I thought I had a perfectly calculated run, but my biggest fear had come true. I was a failure. A game mechanic 30 minutes in brought the dream of this challenge to its knees. I was now starting to question if this was even possible anymore. With this run considered a failure, I was still not willing to give up. I made it this far, so I might as well complete the circumnavigation, even if I did fail the challenge. I auto-built a new aircraft and made my way back up into the skies above, continuing for the Gerudo Highlands, determined to at least complete my dream. Forging my path ahead, I arrived at the desert, flying by both Skyview Towers and making my way down past the Lomai Labyrinth. Now I was flying straight for what was supposed to be the hardest part of the journey, the Eye of the Storm and the Faron region. Although I did realize something, I was a bit too high up to actually fly through the storm. Instead, if I would have stayed on the same trajectory, I would have flown right over the top of it. So in my infinite wisdom, I had come up with a technique to lose altitude very fast by pressing B on the controller while still on the aircraft. This would allow Link to fall with the craft and then recontrol it once enough altitude was lost. This was an ingenious strategy that I had tested out multiple times, but this time I made a massive mistake. When I let go, I was still pushing forward on the joystick and ran right off the edge of the aircraft. This was the lowest of lows. And in my head, there was no way anything could get worse from this point forward. 
I made my way down to the aircraft to take off once again and hopefully continue the rest of my journey. And just when I thought nothing else could go wrong, this happens. What? What? Oh no, oh no, this is bad. This is... <laughs> oh my god. That just did not happen. That did not just happen. <laughs> <laughs> at this point the game it was trying to break my spirits as if i hadn't already failed enough oh and the cherry on top my moderator craig he was just straight up flaming me in discord chat if anybody is wondering i am now looking for a new moderator so in a spiteful rage i was bound and determined to destroy the lionel that had stolen my last bit of hope only to get slapped around like a toddler with no gaming skills. As I quietly raged to myself, I remembered one foolproof way to always defeat a Lionel. Flurry rush until you win. And with a successful dispatch, it was finally time to go find some building materials and make a new aircraft to complete the circumnavigation. Once back up in the air, I backtracked a little ways to where my aircraft had fallen before, and I started to gain altitude to fly directly into the storm. At this point, I was running fully on hopium, trying not to lose my faith. And into the storm I went with the goal of at least making it to the other side. And to my amazement, I was not struck down by a bolt of lightning and made it safely through. Not even a scratch, other than my pride and dwindling mental state. Finally, things were maybe starting to look up because all I have to do now is fly around the last three towers in order to complete this long journey and head back to Lookout Landing. The last leg was finally underway and without any issues at all, I went around the first tower. And then the second tower on top of Mount Lanayru. And finally, the last tower in Zora's Domain. The end was in sight, with only five minutes left to go until I reached Lookout Landing. Once I arrived in the airspace above, I plummeted down into the middle of the central square, completing the circumnavigation, but failing this challenge entirely. And we finally, finally made it to Lugal Landing after, after the, the pain and suffering. I was really disheartened at this point. Yeah, yippee, let's go. This yippee, it was not the sound of success, but the sound of utter failure. This was not a joyful moment for me but a feeling of relief that this nightmare was finally over. My perfectly calculated run was no more than a mere disaster that sucked out all of my emotions, leaving this blank husk. Although I guess I cannot consider it a total failure, as I did become the first person to circumnavigate Hyrule in an aircraft, Amelia Earhart style. Although Amelia Earhart didn't come back. <laughs>